Hi, my name is Dave Ruger. Today is March 9th, 2010. And this is a brand new API 312 clone preamped dual channel. Uh, as you can see, it has a 12 step gain switch for each channel plus an output attenuator to allow you to overdrive the preamp gain a little bit if you want to while still keeping the level to your recorder from clipping. Um, each channel has a mic line switch which I will show you in operation plus there is a uh, 48 volt phantom plus a pad and a um, polarity invert switch which will functions but you won't be able to really hear any difference with it uh, because there's nothing to compare to so I'll probably skip that operation since it won't be that dramatic in the actual sound. So, given that, I have a dynamic mic here, an SM57 hooked up to the preamp, which is going into my monitoring setup and should come out here if everything is working properly, and it will be. So, first thing I will do is turn the power on. You can hear that there was a little bit of pop in. La 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 la. So, the mic is definitely working. Um, that is the gain operation here. As I turn it down, you can see that the sound gets lower. If I turn it up and then turn the output attenuator down, the sound, of course, goes away. So, I'll turn it back a little bit. Now we'll go to channel two. Uh, same thing, I'll plug the mic in, check, 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 again. Up, 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 the gain is going up, and the attenuator goes down. So this is working just the way we want it. So I'll turn the gain down on both of these channels. Now I'll go back to channel one, and this time I'm going to take my 57 out of the mix and use my handy dandy. Studio Project C1, which is a very nice condenser microphone. In fact, with this particular preamp, it sounds awesome. I would not hesitate to use this on a guitar cabinet, vocals, you name it. It would sound pretty good. So, uh, of course, the feature of a studio or a condenser microphone is that it needs phantom power. So, I have nothing right now keep the gain down as low as possible because the output will be fairly high. Now when I engage the phantom power, we should hear a little bit going on, and we do. And if I turn the gain up, you can see very quickly it's going to start getting very hot. And now if I turn the volume down, ta-da! It's working. It's actually working quite nice. So uh, I'll take this opportunity to use the pad. With the pad engaged, the volume now drops down quite a bit and then I can push it up again. So uh, the pad, very useful to tame your volume. Uh, invert polarity, oh, actually you can hear a little bit. And there's the polarity back, invert, back. So um, it probably won't come on the video, but you can hear it in the room here. So now I will disengage the phantom power so I can unplug this and put it into the other channel. Of course it will take a while for the phantom volts to dissipate and now I can safely move the mic over to channel 2 and again da 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 I'll go the lowest engage the phantom and again we hear we have volume of course I'm pretty close to these <laughs> these speakers, so it'll feed back. But if I engage the pad, I can now start to get usable volume again. And there you have it. Okay, so that is the Phantom. And if I turn the volume down a little bit, you can see I'm getting really good control over the attenuation. If I bump up the input gain, it'll start to distort a little bit on the preamp in which case you can get a nice hot signal. We like that. 
Okay, so I'm going to turn this back all the way down, keep the output volume up. Again, disengage the phantom. It's, not, it's always a good idea to let the phantom power dissipate so you don't destroy your mic. I happen to like this mic, so I don't want to destroy it. Okay, so the last test I'm going to do here is I'm going to demonstrate the line input for this particular one. I'm using a CD player. Uh, the nice thing about these inputs jacks is that they are Neutrik combo jacks, so they can use both an XLR input and a standard TRS quarter inch input. I will use this on channel one first. Uh, put the gain all the way down because I'm not sure how loud this is going to be. But the first thing we'll do is engage the line switch. I will turn this on now and we should start to hear some signal once it starts playing. Okay, you can hear it's coming now. We'll turn it up. Okay. Pad. Okay. And now we'll do the same thing with channel two. And flick the line switch. And there it is. It's going to kick in hard. This might be a good time to show you the over, overdriving the preamp gain. If I pulled the output volume down a little bit. You can't really hear it probably on the video, but it is distorting pretty heavily on the preamp. So if we pull that back a little bit, nice and warm, just the way we like it. If you keep it out of that range, it's nice and clean. Sounds great. It's a fantastic preamp. So there you go. Um, that is the unit in operation. I'm going to turn the power off now. And that is one of the side effects of this particular design. Uh, it tends to bleed out signal to your outputs. Um, it just happens to be an artifact of the the clone circuitry. Um, there's no relay switch on the output itself, you know, which would be nice because then it could uh, basically kick in and keep that bleeding voltage from going out the uh, the output signal. But in any case, it's a very minor idiosyncrasy of this particular unit. The main thing is it sounds fantastic. The op amps in it are basically clones of an old API desk and uh, it gets that nice warm and aggressive character that we've all come to love with the API preamps. So there it is. I hope you enjoy it. This does show that the unit is fully operational so if something should happen during shipping and it's no longer functioning when it's received, we should be able to file a damage claim because as you can tell, it's working fine. All right, that's it. Thanks much.